Are you looking for ways you can migrate to the UK in 2022? If this is something you're interested in, then this video is for you. In today's video, I'll be talking about two ways Commonwealth citizens can migrate to the UK without needing to have a job or having sponsorship or an endorsement. I mean, all you need to do is just apply for the visa and start coming. Hey guys, welcome back again to my YouTube channel. If you're coming across my face or my channel for the very first time, my name is Faith Ojone. And on this channel, I talk about ways, you know, you can migrate to the UK. I mean, hidden ways that no one talks about. So if this is something you're interested in, then you need to subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post videos like that. And also, I vlog about my life in the UK and all of those good stuff. Without saying so much, let's get started. <laughs> There are two ways a Commonwealth citizen can migrate to the UK in 2022. So I've got a lot of questions like, oh Faith, what are other ways I can migrate to the UK without needing to have to go through the job route, the skilled worker route, and all those other ones that need me to have a job or endorsements or sponsorship. And I made research and here, this visa, this two visa category I'll be mentioning is for Commonwealth citizen okay so if you're from a commonwealth nation and you're watching this video then you might be eligible for this visa the first visa we'll be talking about is the ancestry visa you can apply for ancestry visa if you are one of the following commonwealth citizen a british citizen overseas or a British national overseas, or you're a citizen of Zimbabwe. So I know it sounds like it's the same thing I'm talking about, but it differs. So some people who are born in the UK, maybe after they spent some time, they became a citizen, but their parents took them away and they've not been to the UK since then. And they felt like, oh, they cannot migrate to the UK. But if you are a citizen and you know you are, or you're, your parent is citizen of a, the UK, I mean, watch this video okay and if you've not subscribed to the channel what are you waiting for hit the subscribe button and support your girl for you to qualify for the ancestry visa you must also prove that one of your grandparents was born in the uk the channel island you must prove that you are 17 years and over you have enough money to sponsor yourself like when you get to the uk you can rent an accommodation you can take care of yourself support yourself even when you're coming with your dependents because this visa allows you to come to the uk with your dependents and you can work on this visa and live permanently in the uk i mean this is a sweet visa if you ask me like you don't need to have a job you don't need to have sponsorship and all of those things so moving on your ancestry must show that you have grandparents born in the following circumstance are your parents like migrated to the uk before 31st of march of 1922 you can also claim an ancestry if you or your grandparents we are adopted in the uk and if your grandparents we are not married so even if your grandparents um that have that qualifies for the ancestry are not married but they were in the uk you can also claim ancestry you can go through that route and get your visa so you cannot claim ancestry through step parents the ancestry visa fee is 531 pounds you also need to pay a nhs sole charge for the amount of time so usually the ancestry visa is for five years so when you apply for the ancestry visa and you get it you get a five years visa route and after the five years you can then apply for your indefinite leave to remain and if you don't want to apply for your indefinite leave to remain you can still i mean apply for an extension for the ancestry visa but i don't know why anyone wants to apply for extension when you can get a permanent leave to remain so the good thing about this visa is you don't need to have a job you don't need to be sponsored if you can show proof your ancestry then you can actually migrate to the uk with this visa i mean you never can tell you might have like a link a lineage somewhere so this is asking your parents do you have any parents or grandparents that migrated to the uk so, 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 so time and all of that so you can use that to claim ancestry if you ask me here are the things you can or cannot do on an ancestry visa you can work on an ancestry visa you can study you can bring your partner or children full-time employment or for um part-time employment you can be self-employed you can have your own business what you cannot do is you cannot switch into this visa if you came into the uk with another visa and you do not have access to public funds so if you're migrating to the uk on the ancestry visa you need to be 
financially ready and prepared because you do not have access to public funds but after you get your indefinite leave to remain your ilr what indefinite leave to remain practically means is that you then now have all access to benefits like every other citizen even if you're not yet a citizen you have access to benefits you can you know travel in and out of the uk without needing immigration controls or needing a visa the next one i'll be talking about is right of abode Yes, you can prove your right of abode in the UK if you're a Commonwealth citizen. Right of abode means that you are allowed to live and work in the UK without any immigration restrictions, which means you will not need visa to come into the UK. Gang gang. I mean, do you think that there's something like this for Commonwealth citizen? Yes, so this is for Commonwealth citizen. It is called right of abode for Commonwealth citizen citizen so you do not need visa to come to the uk you can just pack your bag and you're coming to the uk but first before you can do that you need to prove you have right of abode in the uk you can prove your right of abode if you have a uk passport describing you as a british citizen or a british subject with right of abode otherwise you need to apply for certificate of entitlement yes we are getting there i mean so some of you will be like, okay, what if I think I have right of abode and how do I go about it? There's a way you can actually apply for certificate of entitlement and then they will now give you that. Then you can now use that to enter the UK. If you're part of the Windrush generation, there are different ways to your right to live in the UK. You may have right of abode in the UK either because of your parents or because you are married to someone with right of abode. For your parents, you have the right of abode. If all the following applies, one of your parents was born in the UK and a citizen of United Kingdom and colonies when you were born or adopted. So if you have a parent who is a UK citizen, yeah, you have the right of abode. I mean, some people might not even know this because I've gotten tons of questions telling me, oh, but in faith, my dad is UK citizen. How can I migrate to the UK? Now you know. So, if you're watching this video and you have a parent who is a British citizen, I mean, then you can migrate to the UK via the right of abode. You don't even need visa. So, all you need to do is get your entitlement certificate. Because there are some people I actually had a conversation with on Instagram that told me that their parents are UK citizens, but they left the UK when... Um, the lady told me she was four years old when her parents left the UK, but her parents um, are UK citizen. I'm guessing they are very aged now and they don't know the whole process of which she can migrate to the UK. Okay, so if you're watching this video, I don't know, I'm supposed to actually have this conversation with her, but I lost, I lost in touch with her. I don't know. If you're watching this video, you, the lady that contacted me, please. I mean, I hope this video will help you. If you have a parent who are British citizen and they are aged parents, you can use them to apply for your certificate of entitlement, then migrate to the UK using the right of abode. As a you have to be a Commonwealth citizen though. Yeah. So moving on, if you were a Commonwealth citizen on the 31st December 1982, you have the right of abode. The thing, the reason they said this is because some country actually that were part of the Commonwealth nation actually left the commonwealth then they rejoined again if you are from a country that was once commonwealth citizen and left the commonwealth and came back to join the commonwealth you do not qualify for right of abode unfortunately so yeah when you find out that your parents are british citizen and you know that you have the right of abode and you want to migrate to the uk the next step is for you to apply for your certificate of entitlement once you have your certificate of entitlement the next thing is to pack your bag and start coming to the uk i mean yes so how do you then apply for your certificate of entitlement so you can apply for your certificate of entitlement and this will go on your passport so it shows that you have the right of abode so when you get to the uk you show the immigration they see that the right of abode so it's just like you're applying for visa but this time around you're applying for certificate of entitlement how you apply for certificate of entitlement depend on whether you are inside or outside the uk a certificate of entitlement costs 372 pounds in the uk 
okay and again if you're applying for certificate of enticement they can refuse you okay and if you are refused you will be refunded i'll leave the link of the form of how you can fill out your right of abode in the uk and i'll also leave the link to the ancestry visa and how to claim right of abode in the uk if you have parents who are british citizens or nationals so if you want to just in case you're just coming across this for the very first time you've not heard about it before you can go to gov.uk just to read more about the accessory visa and the rights of abode just to get a better understanding of how you can go about it and if you have no clue on how you can go about it the best thing you can do so that once you apply for your certificate of entitlement you can get it is seek a professional help look for a solicitor like an immigration lawyer who will put you through guys we have come to the end of this video if this video was helpful give it thumbs up like share comment subscribe if you have not thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in my next video Bye bye